Why are you Why are you looking at over just, there? We're looking over I'm here. Sorry. We're saying hello to our friends. I'm so just, I'm just thrilled to have the sugar bomb that we're going. Oh, to it's get. not going to be a sugar bomb though. It's not going to be a sugar bomb. You see, he's not. He he doesn't realize the research I've done on this. So a little story. We are making Cosmos tonight. Um, and by the way, the reason we're making Cosmos is kind of conflicted. I love a good Cosmo. However, nice look. However, I have not made a good one myself, if that makes sense. I have, you know, we've looked up recipes like years, years ago when we first, you know, started trying them and they were okay. Like they were fine. So I definitely did the most research I, I've done for this because this was something that I wanted to get better. And so tonight we're making three different kinds. I'm super excited about. So he's giving me a little, a little bit of a hard time. I'm really looking but forward I to But I cannot wait. Three. So we're kind of doing a taste test and seeing which one we like best. So, so. how are you, um, you, you've been partaking in a little bit of cocktails for the last, last couple of weeks. I know, I, I, I will say, weekends. but today's Tuesday on Sunday had nothing. <laughs> And on why, Monday, why was that? Because so I just got back from a trip with my girlfriends, like the gr girls I knew since freshman year of college at my university, love and honor. So, which is like the best Ohio school, wouldn't you agree, Andy? Yeah, yeah. Not, so, um, so shout out if any of my girls are watching. Um, <clears throat> we had an amazing time, and we were, you know, we were enjoying a lot of things. We were enjoying sun. We were enjoying food. We were enjoying a few cocktails. Yeah, just a um, couple. So when I got home on Sunday, I was kind of ready to to take a, to take a break. <laughs> you slept. You slept and drank a lot of water. I was ready to take a break of the sugar. So, um, but it was a wonderful, wonderful time. But this, but I was thinking for today, like I feel like this is dedicated to um, all my girlfriends. So girlfriends from college, girlfriends that are local, um, girlfriends that are in the different places we've lived. So to all my girlfriends, this is dedicated to you, you and have, my sister, because my sister's my girlfriend, because you, you know. have a lot of good girlfriends. I have a lot of good girlfriends. I'm yeah. very blessed. So yeah, so we were at Rosemary Beach and we had a delightful time. Um, but so this is making me think of them and my other Where girlfriends. Where is Rosemary Beach? Maybe That's in Florida. It's on, if you've never heard of it, it's on the Panhandle of Florida. Um, it's beautiful. It's yeah, like it a was. Gorgeous. The pictures were incredible. He was the places so, that you stayed were or the place that you stayed was incredible. Yeah, he was so excited about all the pictures. He got a little jealous. Yeah. But yeah. um but anyway, yeah, so so this is dedicated to all my girlfriends and um and especially the ones I was just with because I'm like in withdrawal from that because that was so nice. Not that I don't love my time with you, but it was really <laughs> nice being yeah. on the beach in the sun. So I came home and it was a little chillier here. And it's going to get really chilly tomorrow. So, but that's just spring in Philly. This is what it is. Speaking that's of Philly, nice. Today is National Pretzel Day, and I should have gotten a Philly pretzel. In fact, now I'm truly regretting not getting a Philly pretzel, but I decided since I had been so, um, you know, I've been really eating a lot of yummy stuff the past week, I thought I'd make healthier pretzels. So they're whole wheat, they're made with Greek yogurt, <laughs> And I'm a little worried how they're going to taste, but we'll have them with our Cosmos later. Looking forward to so, it. So, but I did make them homemade. And I actually, Joy Bauer is someone that makes a lot of healthy recipes and it's her recipe. So, um, so we're going to try it. But just in case they're not so good, we have some yummy Wegmans honey Dijon mustard, which is almost out. You can see how much we love it. Yeah. So that'll be good to dip in there. Um, but you know, when I was doing my research, I actually found out so much more about the Cosmos because honestly, truth be told, I thought really the first time I ever heard about Cosmo was sex and the city. I mean, that's how most of us yeah. ever heard about the Cosmo. They spoke about it, you know, during the show. It's a great show. Um, but what I found, actually, to get my notes, is that it did origi originate more recently. Like it's not been around, like you've been talking about old fashions and Manhattans and those been have been around forever. for years. Cosmos more recent and basically what happened, so there's three people that it can kind of be linked to for the creation of the current Cosmos that we're all enjoying. And of course, a lot of mixologists give their own spin and take on it. But the three people are Cheryl Cook, Del DeGraff and Cuccini and I appreciate um, a fellow YouTuber that makes videos for this information. And I will be, I don't have it there now, but I will be after the stream 
updating. I don't have the recipe down. It just became much more involved. So I have the basics down under description, but I'm going to be putting more information, including the link to um, to the two places I got the recipes from <clears throat> to make the three. <clears throat> With all your post-its. I know. I'm all set here. Um, but in any event, the three people are Cheryl Cook, Del DeGraff, and Cuccini. And Cheryl Cook was put to task of creating a cocktail because there was a new spirit that came out, and that is was the Absolute Citron. And so when that came out, she was charged to create like a great cocktail to hmm. use that with. Now, I will tell you, we are not using Absolute Citron. I, I actually have never bought that. Um, yeah. I mean, we've always just bought regular vodka. We're using yep. Tito's. We love Tito's. To, yeah, used to um, have bottles. Too. So it'll be interesting because I don't think where I really like getting Cosmos, I don't think they use Absolute Citron. Absolute, Absolute Citron. Citron. Yeah. But we'll see how this all takes out. So we'll see how important it is in the final product. Um, but in any, way, any event, she was charged to create a cocktail and specifically targeting women, like wanting to be something that a, you know, that a woman might enjoy ordering with their new spirit. Then after that happened, Del DeGraff and Cuccini revisited that recipe and they basically made it what it is today. And so the first version I will make is the Del DeGraff um, version and that one i'm not going to do what he does because i'm worried i'll burn the condo down um one of the things he does um, that really made it very showy was he would do the whole like where you um you squeeze the le the orange peel and you light it so it makes the big poof. I know, let's not do that i really don't feel comfortable doing that today i would have wanted to have practiced it at least 20 times and of course i've not done that so because i was away enjoying myself so um we're going to do it with the orange peel the rim but no fire but what was interesting about him is he served it at a special event to Madonna. And that's kind of where, well, you know, Madonna, and that would have been in the... 80s? Nine, no, I, I wonder if it... Well, might it, I think it was around 90 or something. Mm. It was... It, it, but I don't have the date. But it again, it's not been that long. Um, maybe it was late 80s. But she, you know, it kind of when you get hooked to a celebrity... All of a sudden, things start, start goes, to become it just goes crazy. Yes, and that is when it got mentioned in Sex in the City because of that connection. So when the ladies went out, they wanted the Cosmo, the they wanted the drink the Madonna had had drunk. So interesting, just like the history of how it all came to be. Um, I will say that I've had some really lame Cosmos, and I've had some really great Cosmos. I feel like a Cosmo can go either way. It can be this sweet, yucky concoction or it can be perfectly balanced and delicious. And funny enough, and I know you know this, one of my favorite places to get a Cosmo is at Seasons 52. <laughs> it's a chain restaurant. And I don't know if it's just the mixologist that's at the one that's near us, but they create a really balanced- They also, they also give you extra. <laughs> they, well, they, they do it in a little mini shaker. And then when they pour it, they can only pour so much in because it's too, too, too you know, full. And then you get the rest, which isn't a ton, but then it kind of marinates in the ice. And so you get a diluted version, but you know, it's all good. So, um, but I really feel like I've always had a very balanced one at season 52. So mm -hmm. yay you, because, because they're good. So I can honestly say that I've never, ever ordered a Cosmo. Well, I could bug you about that because I would say that's kind of sexist. But what I will say is that I be, think because it's the hit or miss that oftentimes I've experienced, I actually don't blame you because I feel like you need to know where you're ordering it and what they're putting in it. And, and I think it's like that with a lot of drinks. I think a lot of drinks, there's too much sugar put in and, right. and all that. So we'll talk about what's different in each of these recipes and then we're gonna make all three of the drinks and then we are going to try all three, each of us. And just kind of try to see like what are the differences we know, which one do we prefer, um, and all if that. Any. And all of them get served straight up. So and we're, we're did, I did chilled glasses. I was fancy tonight. So I feel like they will all do okay just sitting for a little bit while we quickly mix the rest. And I've got everything ready. Um, so I think I'll just start. Let's go. Okay. I'm looking so, forward to it. Yes, so am I. So in any event, um, the first one is the DeGraff. So remember, DeGraff is the one that took the original recipe and tried to make it better. And so in that one, let me get my shaker filled with ice. Okay. You, get, What's that? you put your ice over there. That's good. I did? Uh, yeah, instead of all that back and yep. forth. Okay, so in the DeGraff, it's going to take 
and I use this one actually because it uses a lot of one and a half ounces. So this one actually has one and a half. So I'm just using this one. It takes one and a half ounces of vodka. Now it does take the absolute citron, which I do not have. So full disclosure. So I'm just using Tito's. So I'm going to do that. I'm just gonna leave this open because we're gonna So you know again. what recipe you've used? And sorry, wait a second, one ounce of Ocean Spray Cranberry Juice. I did shake research it. on this shake too. It. So Ocean Spray is what was shake. used in the original. So you could go, you could go bougie and you could go organic and all that, which is totally fine. You do you, but I am start, I'm just gonna do it like how it was originally. And so this is just your standard, it's one ounce of ocean spray cram okay. cranberry juice. You're, you're kind of missing my mojo there, baby. And then we're going to do a half ounce of Cointreau. Get that. Half ounce of Cointreau. Now Cointreau is a nicer triple sec. You could do triple sec, but Cointreau is a better quality. So we are definitely using the Cointreau today. Then it takes a quarter ounce of lime. I've already squozen, squozen? squozen. my lime. Is that a word? And I need to get to, to a quarter. Do you want to look, so, you look up squozen? squozen? You're going to check that out? Okay. So there we go. And that's it. And then we'll put the orange peel so you can get the glass out. The fancy yep. one. Make shake for at least 10 seconds. Okay, and then I'm going to do a double strain because they do recommend that so you don't get any pieces of ice and stuff, especially from this kind. So let's see how this looks. It's pink. It's beautiful. Wow, is that pink. Isn't that lovely? I've lost all of the masculinity. And there's a bunch of ice there, so that is why it is important to do that. And then I'm going to, so this is, so let's see, we have to keep, we gotta keep track of this. Oh, and I gotta put the orange peel. I got the orange peel already. Yep. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to squeeze that. No, the lime's already in there. And then we're gonna no. put it. Okay. No, that's for something else. Okay. And then I'm just gonna slip that in. Okay. So that's the first one. So put that to the right. Yep. So you okay. see that one has no simple syrup. It's just vodka, cranberry juice, Cointreau, lime, and the orange peel. So now let me empty this. I'm gonna get my ice back in. So the next one we're gonna make was from the guy where I got all this information. And it's his, so this was the initial, oh, okay. It's his ahead. version. Okay. Um, and I forget his name. And again, I'll have his information and the video down below. I apologize for that. Um, so I'm gonna call this the Toter Cosmo, T-O-T-R, because that's what his channel is. Okay. So this is his. And for hit, and he's a mixologist, you know, he knows yeah. his stuff. And so for his, we do, again, one and a half um, of vodka. Again, he uses the absolute, absolute I cannot say that tonight. Citron. I've not even had a cocktail. The citron, and I don't have that. We're using Tito's. It's just your leftover effects. It's the leftover effects. And then a half ounce of Cointreau. So go. what's, wasn't that the same as the other one? There's some things that are different though. Okay. Half ounce of Cointreau. And then it's only three quarter ounce of the cranberry juice, so a little less cranberry juice. Okay. So I'm gonna use this actually. So I'm gonna have one, because this has a three quarter ounce, which is good. Okay. Three quarter ounce cranberry juice and three quarter ounce lime juice. So equal cranberry and lime, which I thought was really interesting. Pretty lime. I know. I think I could already tell you're like, you're sus suspect on that. He does not like too much lime in his drinks. That's like one of his things. But because of that, you also use a quarter of an ounce of simple syrup to help balance it all. So this has a little sugar in it. Okay, so simple syrup. We always have some in the Agra household, don't we? Yep. For the Manhattans or fashions, I forget. Or is it all of the above? It's uh, old fashions. Okay, you can get the next pretty glass out. And then I'm going to shake so that up. Who's all this, by the way? Um, well, I think Maddie's bowing out because she wants to exercise. So you're just you're drinking all this? No, you're helping me, babe. I don't know if I want to drink all this. Well, then we can't throw them away. 
It would be terrible. All right, so then this is that. Oh, it's Again, pink. we got beautiful pink. All right. Oh my gosh, these look gorgeous. Okay. Orange. And the orange. Uh, I'm gonna do this one. And again, I'm going to take the orange, squeeze so it gets those juices, or oil, it's not juices. The rim, slip that in. That is the toter. It's a little um, bit less, it's a little bit lighter than the other one. It? Yeah, because so, it had a couple different proportions. All right, so then the last one that we are doing is, I'm worried how the mic is picking up all this noise. So I apologize I'm, for this. I'm sure it's loud. I'm known for noise in some of my streams. So sorry. Hopefully you can turn down the volume when I'm shaking. All right, so then the other recipe I found was from a mixologist that works with Cointreau. And it was just a very different recipe, so I thought, ah, let's just try it. And so it is all on her portions. So this is from the makers of Cointreau. Um, and it's three parts vodka, two parts Cointreau, two parts cranberry juice, and then two lime wedges which is, I think, really hard because that does not give you an exact amount of lime. So like, here's hoping. So I'm going to just stick with the one and a half because like that's worked for all these other ones. So for three parts, I'll make it one and a half um, of vodka. Yeah. Let me get that. Oh, not that one, this one. So we'll do that. Now he did not specify, I don't think he specified um, citron. I think he just said vodka. And so that would be the one ounce um, of Cointreau. So that's a good amount of Cointreau. One ounce? Yeah, it's Cointreau? three, two, wow. two, two. So yeah, I know this will be interesting. But you know, if we don't like it, then we don't have to drink it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, one ounce of Cointreau. And then one ounce of cranberry juice. Like, I'm worried about there not being enough lime in this one. But, Liam, we're going to see. This is why you try things. And then two wedges of lime. So, I'm just going by what it looked like on his video. So, I'm putting two wedges of lime right in there. Squeezed, I squeezed them. And I'm putting the lid on. And, you're wanting to get the other and then glass. the other glass, yeah. Right? And we did this one. We did contemporary because it kind of to me was a more contemporary. Um, and again, they all they all really do suggest chilled glasses, by the way. Yep. Straight up. So no, no uh, uh, orange peel or anything like yep. that. Yep. There's no orange okay. peel. This one um, now it looks the same now, but it, it kind pink. of it looked a little more pink going in. Personally, I thought. And then we're going to do an orange peel. Get the oils going. I hope nobody sees this that I know. <laughs> Come on, you're today's man. You eat quiche. All drink, right. Drink a lot of so things. I'm going to bring these over so to help you make sure. Okay. Make so sure that keep track though. Okay? So this is we'll the right this, this was the first one. Yeah, that was the first one. He's taking a picture, so we are coming right on back. Because there's no way I'm making more of these. Um, and so it was on the right. The first one was on the right. Yep. The rest of them we know. All right, so I'm gonna clear this a little bit. So while he's doing that, because we are not making extras, um, that's enough cocktails for a Tuesday night for sure, um, I thought I would try <laughs> I would try these healthy uh, pretzels. So where do you like to get your pretzels? You'll have to let me know down below um, if you like getting them from the Philadelphia Pretzel Company, from Annie Ann's. Oh, I think Annie Ann's, they don't taste like real like, like, um, what do, what so do you say? Enough. Yeah, they don't taste like traditional pretzels, but they are so addictive. I have not had one in years. I mean, if you had one in years, it's been a long time. Um, so I'm just going to take a, I'm going to put a little, remember which one? First one. Okay, first one. All right. Second one. First one, second one. Here we go. So I'm going to put a little of this um, honey Dijon on our plate. Oh my, that really came out with a vengeance. Mm. Okay, just gonna take a little taste of this first to see what it is before we try these. Gets a little something salty. There we go. All right, let's see how this is. It's 
so delicious. Well, it's better with the honey mustard. Our son Matt had his with dinner. Um, I was gonna share the recipe, but like I like it better. I, I mean, I'm all about whole wheat bread, but I feel like this wheat is a little bit bitter. Um, I don't think I would, I've made these, not this, but I've made the kind of recipe with, with Greek yogurt and flour and baking soda and salt. Oh, you know, made them into bagels. I think those are better than with the whole wheat. The wheat's, or I do halvesies. I do like half white, yeah, half wheat. It's a little it was, bitter. You're right. It's a little bitter. Um, not bad. Not bad. And bad. as Matt said, you just made a roll that looks like a pretzel. <laughs> it's like, you really didn't make a pretzel. I'm like, oh, you're not wrong. Let's so, taste okay. Let's taste. Yeah. Oh, so should we take taste the better one for, what do you think we should do? I think we should go from Go for the one that mm -hmm. like a little bit. So this is the Quantro, the one, the Quantro Company's mixologist. So th this had, I think, bat more different um, ratios. It didn't have as much lime juice in it. It's not bad. I feel like it's a bit cranberry forward. Not that that's a bad thing, but it's definitely cr I'm cranberry -y. Oh, there's, why'd you do that? Why the face? Why the face? It's a little cranberry. Yeah, but that's not what, why you do the face. I smell the orange though. Like it's amazing how putting the oils around there, you get a little flavor and you get that smell. Like it's such an experience. I really enjoy that. So now this is the one. The palette with the pretzel. <laughs> so then this is the one that the fella that I learned the history and about DeGrasse, which is here. This was his version. Let's try this one. <laughs> I'm just gonna let you chase this. I'm not gonna say a word. I wish I could write down what he's going to say. Oh, he's gonna say too so much lime. lime. Too much lime. <laughs> as soon as I taste it, I'm like, that is not gonna be his favorite. I don't yes. like lime, but that's... so it's funny. Like this is cranberry forward. This is lime forward. Interesting. Um, and then this is apparently the one that would have been served to Madonna, I guess, without the smoky, you know, show with the orange. Oh, and of course it's not citron, you know, that too. Maybe that affects it. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to, I know what too, I'm gonna have to go side by side to, to retaste. So I feel like this one's more similar to that. Now I'm gonna have to taste both of them. This one is definitely drinkable. If you love lime, if you like that forwardness, this is the one for you, the Toter, T-O-T-R one oh, that you'll see below. This one? No, yeah. This one. But if you um, are more lime averse, not averse, but just like you don't like a heavy lime, that might be a little much. Yeah, I wanna try these together now. Huh. Together right after. Okay. What's nice is like, what helps with the sweetness of the cranberry and the sugar is that bracingness of vodka. Like I think that helps, you know, give you that, that straight spirit. I'm curious which one you like best. Okay, I know which one I like best. So which one do you like best? I think I like that one the best. Really? I like this one the best. I mean, they're close. Yeah, they're close. This one, to me, for me, feels more balanced. It feels... Um, it is. Like, it, there isn't one thing really shouting at you, which is what I like, I will say, in um, a Cosmo. I don't like it... To, sometimes I have a Cosmo at a place I'm not happy with, and it's like very cranberry and it's just too much. Like, I'm not ordering a... What's the thing with cranberry and... The, the sea spray, the sea, oh, yeah. or uh, sea breeze. Sea breeze. I'm not. I'm not wanting that, right? So, and this isn't. This isn't like that. This is not like I wouldn't sit there and send that back or be disappointed. It's just if I compare them, it's a little more cranberry forward. The the vodka helps balance that sweetness, but this one I believe has. No, this is what's interesting is this one didn't have a definitive lime. Um. I think I'm going to call Measurement. It. So I will just have to know that with that, I want to, and by the way, for the lime wedges I put in this one, where I used the um, one and a half 
ounces of vodka. Oh no, that was in yours. That was in yours that the lime was. I'm sorry. That's probably why, because that probably has the least amount of lime. I know. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah, I, I bet you that's it. Because this one had this one had a quarter yep. ounce of this is, lime. I, that's my favorite. Yeah. I mean, not that I would <laughs> ever get it out. But it's, <laughs> well, why don't we just do it's, this? It's, it's not your fa favorite. It's my favorite of what we have here. Mm. But I will say, winner, winner, chicken dinner, that's the recipe I will... I will use from now on. And isn't it just fitting that it's the Madonna one? Being an 80s girl? I think it's fitting. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a little bit like fitting. of a full circle. Oh sorry, full circle moment. Um, oh my goodness. So I mean Madonna's a little out there now, but at the time, back in the 80s, oh, you know, she was she was all that. So um, and even into the nineties. I just had my sugar intake for the last like <laughs> Wait, 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 Month. wait. The only one with actual simple syrup was the limey one. Mm. So these so actually... What are we going to do with that one? Oh, let's still drink it. You fool. <laughs> um, but these did not have any simple syrup. That one did because there was so much lime juice in it. Oh, by the way, one thing that was so interesting that'll be in... Uh, T O T R Toter, I'm not sure how he says, but his video is at the end. You got to watch the end. He talks about a clarified Cosmo. And by the way, I keep calling Cosmos. I know they're Cosmopolitans, but I've never ordered a Cosmopolitan. I've always said Cosmo. But anyway, um, so I've never heard or had a clarified drink. So have you ever had a clarified drink? I don't know. Yeah. So I didn't know either. I'm glad I'm not the only one. So a clear. So get this. He put a mixture together, so just like we did, he put it in just a glass by itself of, you know, the cranberry juice, the Cointreau, the vodka, etc. Then, in another glass, he put a certain amount of whole milk, no joke. Then he pours the concoction into the whole milk, it curdles, and oh. then you get another glass and you put a, um, a funnel and a coffee filter. Then you pour that concoction there, and it takes like, I think, at least an hour to fully, it just drips. Like he said, do not do it when you're thirsty. Do this when, like, way ahead. It comes out. It's not cloudy. It's not milky. But it does something with rounding out the edges of the spirits and the tannins, like with the, the um, cranberry juice, all this stuff. So one of these times I want to make that because it was so intriguing um, in milk. Like I just thought oh, that was yeah. a very long post. No, yeah, I, I think I, I'm just I am not going to stream that. It's just going to be like between you and I. Um, anyways, and if anyone tries that, let me know, and I can always in the uh, comments below mention when I try that and what I thought. No but worries. let me see, <laughs> Nancy. Oh, ah. <laughs> Hello, Nancy, and I'm so glad that you um, joined us. And yeah, I'm pretty sure that uh, Glenn will now have to give him a hard time about that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, I'm glad you joined me. And these are actually delicious. And the one, Nancy, the DeGraff one, I will make um, for us. It is delicious. It's really balanced. It's really nice. Um, so I'm glad you joined us. But um, yeah, I'm excited we tried this. This was really quite the feat of yeah. checking these all out. Yeah, so great. by the way, if you like this, please um, like the video and please subscribe. Again, I will be updating the details below with the recipes, the video links so that you can get the information that I get got to help um, decide which ones I was going to try tonight. Also this weekend, I'm back to cook uh, streaming cooking. Um, I know I was off for a couple weekends because I had some uh, rest and relaxation in Florida, two different parts, lucky me, one who never travels. <laughs> and here I was um, traveling like a crazy woman in, uh, in April. So, um, and this weekend, it's a great spring dish. It's going to be um, asparagus risotto. Um, so very excited uh, to share that recipe with you. I love risotto. I love, ris especially asparagus risotto. Um, and so that'll be Saturday at 1.30. And next week, oh, so this was a more involved drink, uh, cocktail stream than we usually do. Next week I will be, or we will be, and Matt will be joining us 
in honor of Cinco de Mayo um, coming up that week on Tuesday night at 7.30, we are going to be taste testing three different um, tequilas, blind taste testing. So we'll set it up so that we all can make sure we have, uh, don't know what we're tasting and see what our thoughts are. I'm making um, one of my specialties, which is a guacamole. And I'll share my, my secret ingredient that really makes it yummy. And um, we will also be making one of my favorite margaritas, which is with Patron, um, and is absolutely delicious. So it's all getting ready for Cinco de Mayo next week, and we'll be doing a lot in the stream next Tuesday at 7.30. So, um, so again, if you haven't subscribed, please do. And did I forget anything? I don't think so. I feel like it was a lot. This was a longer Tuesday night for us. It was. And we have some catching up to do here. I'm ready to go to bed. So, <laughs> so I hope you tried these recipes. Please let me know below if you do, what you liked, what you didn't like, if you have a better recipe, where do you like to get your Cosmos? What I was mentioning, season 52, if there's a place that you find that make a really good mix, um, maybe it's where you're located in whatever city. And um, otherwise, we'll see you on Saturday at 1.30. And I hope you have a great rest of the week. I hope it goes fast. I hope Friday comes fast. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, see so let me, let me now go through all the liquor to try to... Oh, thank you, sweetie. Try to turn this off. Let's see here.